We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to a brand new video. And I think here in England, it's the end of summer. I've got a jumper on. It's actually quite chilly and it was raining quite hard this morning. I am very excited to get back to Portugal because we still probably got another month of summer left in Portugal, to be honest. September's always a really nice month to spend in central Portugal. But today's very exciting because we are heading to Tewkesbury to pick up some appliances for our kitchen. So we have just arrived in Tewkesbury where we are going to pick up our kitchen appliances that we're going to use in our barn conversion in Portugal and we've come to a place called Montpellier and they make beautiful retro style appliances for kitchens and we can't wait to see what they're going to look like in our barn but we just need to figure out how to get them in the car and then how to transfer them all the way back to Portugal. left Montpellier in Tewkesbury and the team were really helpful and got everything sorted for us and we managed to get the oven and the fridge in the back of the car with room to spare so that means Fernando can actually come back to Portugal with us because I know a lot of you guys were concerned when I took Gingy for her jab you were worried that Fernando didn't go and that we were going to leave him here but we can't leave our baby boy in the UK and not take him back to Portugal with us because he absolutely adores being on the land and running around and having his freedom. Of course he's coming back with us. He just didn't need his jabs because one, he already had them and two, he's Portuguese so of course he's allowed back in the country. The thing is though, when I go back to Portugal, I won't be able to waste all day sitting in traffic. We are currently sat in a traffic jam on the M5 but we're heading towards Worcester where we're gonna try and find a Halford so we can pick up some supplies for the van. So unfortunately, Halfords didn't have what I needed. I was trying to get hold of one of those solar panels that goes in the windscreen of your vehicle and trickle charges your car battery while you're away from it because we're gonna be away from the van for a long while now. And if you remember back to in Portugal, I bought a brand new battery for the van and the last thing I want is for that battery to die. But it's not all lost because I did manage to get some screen wash for this car because we'd just run out. I 
how much my face lit up when I came around the corner and saw the van. It's so attractive, it's beautiful. And I've only been away from it for about a week and I'm already missing it. So leaving it here for like a year, it's gonna be hard. I'm gonna miss it, but it means when eventually we do come back and get the van, it means that we're going on an absolutely epic adventure. But right now we need to transfer the oven and the fridge in to our adventure vehicle that's become a storage unit. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need you. Yeah. There's no way I can do this on my own. Okay. Looks nice though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's gonna look so nice in the barn. Do you want me to go first? No, I don't We did it. We got the oven and the fridge in the van and this is where we're gonna store it until we go back to Portugal and we're going back to Portugal really soon. Me and B are incredibly excited about that but right now we're just running around like headless chickens, getting everything done and ticking off everything so we make sure that we don't forget anything that needs to go to Portugal, like Fernando. <laughs> we don't want to leave him here. But it's crazy just seeing how big a normal size oven is in a house Look at is that ridiculous. Compared to that. That oven in the van is absolutely miniature. It's almost like just a complete baby version of this. Like this just feels ginormous, but in the barn it's going to be so nice we've got four hobs on here we've got a beautiful retro fridge i can't wait to show you but we're not going to show you right now you're going to have to follow us to portugal to see what we've actually gone for see you later have fun so b is just going into this building here in a place called Mosley Village where she's going for her acupuncture. So it's the next day now and as you've just seen B's gone in for her acupuncture and that's one of the many things that she's doing to help herself and it really has helped. She's been having acupuncture now twice a week ever since we got back to the UK from Portugal well over a month ago now which is crazy and now it's only a couple days until we're heading back on the ferry to Portugal and we couldn't be more excited. And I'm really happy that we managed to get the oven and the fridge sorted. And you're probably wondering like, why didn't you just buy an oven and a fridge over in Portugal? And some things you just can't get over there. And we wanted this particular oven and this particular fridge and we couldn't get shipping to Portugal. So we thought, why not just take it with us? So I'm just gonna sit here in Mosley Village and just do a bit of people watching, send a few emails and just hang out for a little bit and just have some time to myself sitting in the car. So whenever B comes out of acupuncture, she's always a little bit zoned out. So I'm not gonna film her, but after she does come out, we're gonna jump straight on the motorway and head for a couple of hours to Nottingham where we're gonna be house sitting for my parents because they've gone away for a couple of days. It's also mine and B's 16th anniversary tomorrow. We've been together 16 years and we've nearly been together longer than we haven't been together. It's crazy in our lifetime. It's just, it just blows my mind, it really does. But it means that we get to Nottingham quite late tonight, but we get to see the cats and I can't wait. And also I've got something cool planned for tomorrow.
I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Squarespace who has sponsored today's video. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it's a brilliant online platform where you can build and design your very own professional looking website without any experience necessary. Being in complete control of your own website is so beneficial as it means you can have access to absolutely everything and can change it whenever you need. There's loads of different themes to choose from, which are all completely customizable to you, and you can add loads of different features on there which suit your website that you want to build. We find Squarespace really intuitive to use, but it's also really nice to have everything in one location on the internet. So we host our podcast on there, we have an online shop, as well as a newsletter. So if you'd like to try out Squarespace and build your very own professional looking website, then click the link in our description or go to squarespace.com forward slash indie projects and you'll get a two week free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Good morning guys, me and B are both absolutely knackered. Yesterday was a really long day and we didn't arrive in Nottingham until late last night, but today, is our 16th anniversary of being together. and It's absolutely crazy that we've been together for 16 years. And like I said before, I've just turned 33 and we've, we've been together pretty much half of our whole entire lives. And that just blows my mind every time I think about it. It was really nice to see the cats. And today is meant to be a nice day weather wise, but we are in the UK, so anything could happen, but we wanna make a nice day of it, so we're gonna plan and go on a really cool walk in the Peak District. And cute little Fernando, it's so nice to see him. He's been a good boy at the moment, but he's been very excited, running around the house like a crazy animal, so I think he's actually quite tired out, but I'm sure he wants to go for a walk, so B's gonna take him out in the garden now. <laughs> He absolutely loves playing with these toys. <laughs> Look at him bat it. <laughs> You're too tired to even get up. You're just gonna lie there and bat them from bed. I've just spotted Gingy Bear, and I'm sure all of you guys will be pleased to know that she's getting on just fine, like her usual self. She's having a great time. Still loves a tummy rub, <laughs> but I bet she can't wait to get back to Portugal and enjoy even more freedom. But she does roam around all over the area around here because that's what Gingy Bear does. She's a free bird, but in Portugal, she's going to love being back, I'm sure. If any of you guys were unsure if Fernando was a dog or a cat, we're pretty sure he's a dog. Fernando! Oh, he doesn't do it for me. Only if you throw it. <laughs> He's such a silly cat. Cats are play wrestling. It's hilarious. It's definitely not actual violence. <laughs> One day you guys will become proper good friends when you get a little bit older. <laughs> Look at Gingy's face. <laughs> so remember I said that anything can happen weather-wise in the UK. Well, it's just started spitting with rain and this morning I looked out the window, it's a little bit cloudy, but the weather forecast said it was gonna burn off, it was gonna be pure sunshine and really warm today. 
and to be honest it did burn off for about an hour and it was lovely beautiful sunshine we we're like we'll go for a walk it's gonna be amazing and now it's raining it never seems to last here in the UK it's a, it's a bit disappointing when you come from somewhere like Portugal where you can plan things like two weeks in advance because you know it's gonna be pure sunshine all day for like barbecues going to the lake and stuff like that but we're gonna make the most of the day even if it's raining we're going to the Peak District and we're gonna find a really nice walk and just enjoy the scenery. So just before my parents left, they must have been doing some clearing out because I've just found something lying here that brings back so much memories. Look at this RC car. So I don't know if you guys remember, but on one of the last videos, I took you, I think it was the last video, I took you to a place called Cannon Hill Park and there they had a really big sand kind of gravelly sandy area and I used to take this RC car there and have so much fun for hours on end probably most weekends it would be cool if I could find the controller and a battery and get it working again and take it back to Portugal but I don't think that's gonna happen it looks like it's had the best of its days to be honest it's just gone 20 past 2 in the afternoon I've just had a little bit of chocolate to give me a little bit of a lift and now I'm feeling ready to go for a lovely walk in the countryside and the sun has come out it's been on off on off all day and now's our chance to head out into the countryside and go for a lovely walk in the Peak District We have just arrived at the destination where we're gonna go for a walk in the Peak District. And the drive here was absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to see what this walk has to offer. I don't actually know exactly where we are because B chose the hike, but I'm sure it's gonna be beautiful. She's always picking good places to go and visit and the sun is still shining. It's so nice to be back in the countryside and out of the city. We've just got onto the trail and it's already really beautiful. The light is gorgeous and soft because it's really quite hazy. We're at quite a high elevation. You can see down there into the valley, the haze. And then over this way, it's creating a really nice soft light. And look at these stone walls. This reminds me so much of Portugal. I've just found a signpost so I can figure out where I actually am. And it looks like we're heading in the direction of Kerber Edge, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm sure if it's not, you locals will tell me otherwise. And then we've got Baslo Edge, and over here, White Edge. So yeah, we're gonna continue in this direction. We've decided to take the left-hand trail because we're hoping it takes us right along the edge of the cliff face and looks over the valley. But the light right now is stunning. We're gaining elevation, so it's got a little bit gusty, a little bit windy, but the views are incredible. We got 180 degree views overlooking the countryside and it feels so good to be out of the city. I know I keep saying it, but this is where I belong. There's some birds flying over and just look at this. It really is nice soft light and all the way along the edge over here, you can see B walking up and there's these stones sticking out. 
that create these lovely formations. And when I said I belong here, I don't mean here in the Peak District. I mean anywhere that is in nature and feels remote and is not surrounded by loads of people. Now just look at this. This is not a bad way to spend our Monday afternoon, is it? And our anniversary, I nearly forgot it was our anniversary. This is the whole point that we're actually on this walk and we thought we better do something really nice. And yes, 16 years today and look at this. So we are now continuing along the trail. I've just started sweating. It suddenly feels a little bit warmer now there's slightly less wind. But we're heading a mile along this track to a place called Froggett End, which apparently overlooks a place called, oh, Froggett Edge, be shouting at me. I keep getting it wrong. I called it Froggett Point and then Froggett Edge. And apparently, no, it is Froggett Edge. I said Frogger End. It is Frogger Edge and it overlooks a place called Frogger and that's why it has its name. And we've just come across a lovely view. Check this out. Look at this. The view's changed a little bit and now we can see deeper into the valley. And down there, I don't know if you can see, a there's a beautiful river that's kind of meandering its way through the valley. So one mile later and a sweaty back, we have arrived at Frogger Edge and was it worth the mile walk? Definitely. I definitely recommend this hike to anyone. Well, it's not really a hike, a walk along a path. You can take a slightly more rugged path as we did right along the edge. It's definitely worth it. Right now I'm standing right on the edge on a massive boulder, looking over the village of Frogger and it's gorgeous. It's just crazy how green it stays throughout the summer in the UK compared to where we live in central Portugal. Everything dies through the summer and it goes kind of a, a shade of almost yellow. But when we get back, it's gonna be starting to go into autumn. We've probably still got another month of sun and it'll go into autumn and I can't wait for spring. Probably my favorite time of the year. So the best thing that I've found on Frogger Edge is this massive boulder with a natural seat built into it. Check this out. If I get in, it feels like someone's made a mold of my body and just carved it into the stone. It's so comfortable. Unfortunately, the view's that direction, but it's still beautiful looking out here. 360 degrees, I've got a nice wind on my neck. I reckon I could chill here with a nice cold can of Coke. Unfortunately, I don't have a drink at all, so 
I'm looking forward to getting back to the car now and then we're gonna head back to my parents' house. We just got back to the car, me and B are both knackered. We woke up tired, so I'm really proud of us for coming out, going for a nice long walk. And recently I brought this uh, smartwatch, which is helping with my fitness, help track my fitness, because I've lost a lot of fitness since I've been back in the UK. And it's cool to see like how many steps you're doing, how many kilometers you're walking per day. So I'm trying to do 10 kilometers per day to keep up my fitness and so far I'm doing really well and right now I'm sweating so I can't wait to get back to Nottingham because it's our anniversary we're gonna get a takeaway and get some nice food It's been a long day, but we just got back to the house. It's now dark and B wasted no time and ordered us a Domino's pizza and we have wedges to go with it and I can't wait to tuck in. So I went for the veggie supreme and you can't do that without going for a big dip barbecue sauce. Let's check out the pizza, see if it's any good. Fernando, <laughs> no, <laughs> look, look what he's got on his head. Help him out. <laughs> No, no, no! Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> he was running around with this on his head. What are you doing? I cannot believe you, you're crazy. Anyway, back to the pizza. That was very entertaining. I think that's probably the best thing I've seen ever in my life. But look at that. Isn't that nice? It's not for you, it's mine. You're not allowed any. I don't think you'd actually like it. It's the next morning, and as you can see, B is in the garden, walking Fernando on the lead. So last night was really nice and chilled, and the pizza was delicious, and Fernando running around with the tissue box stuck to his head was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I keep playing the clip over and over again, and a lot of you guys have asked us about traveling back to Portugal, because literally in the next couple of days, we are boarding the ferry, to Spain and soon we'll be working on the barn yet again. I'm so excited to get cracking on with it and we're going to be in by Christmas. That is the goal and it's just going to be lovely spending Christmas in our hard work. You know our blood, sweat and tears have gone into this home and I can't wait to spend Christmas in it and bring you guys along for the journey as well. But coming back to Gingy, she doesn't have to, no, she does have to have things that Fernando doesn't because basically back in Portugal, with everything that was going on, we couldn't find the time to get Gingy the documents she needed to come back a little bit more smoothly. We wish we had now, but we literally didn't have the time. We were flat out and B's health was the most important thing. So basically, Fernando is Portuguese. He's got his Portuguese passport his pet passport and he had his rabies jab before he left so he's completely fine to head straight back to Spain and Portugal whereas Gingy her rabies jab ran out while we were here so we've already had her rabies jab and that is why we had to wait three weeks after her rabies jab so that we could travel back over the border to Spain and Portugal but she needs one more thing she needs a health certificate and these health certificates are extortionate. 150 pounds just to say that she's healthy to go back over the border, which it feels like a rip off, it really does because the vet prices in Portugal are so affordable. You can get so many things done and they send you away with drugs and all sorts of different things and scans and it usually comes to like 30 euros which is just incredible but here it's a different story so we just have to suck up the price we have to pay it to make sure that Gingy can travel with all the relevant documents but before we know it we'll be back there and it'll be well worth it b is going back to birmingham today because she's got more acupuncture and other other appointments before we go back 
I'm going to stay in Nottingham for one more day because tomorrow I have to take Gingy to the vet to get her that health certificate and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave it there for now but make sure you don't miss the next one because we will be on our way to Portugal.